Good morning. Oh, Alex, you have a new background. I know, it's Nazi, right? Yeah, you switching it up? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. Unmute myself. How are we doing for people? We've got folks rolling on in. It's still only one minute into the hour, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I know. Time. What is it? Who knew? <laughs> I think it looks like lots of folks are here. So, should we get started? Sure. Here's our normal Hello. slides. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you made it to the meeting. Hooray. And I guess Back over in the uh, uh, public meeting working deck, people wanted to be able to see who was here. <laughs> Yep, but here's our agenda. That list is out of date, I've just realized. On this one? The, yeah, it's got Brian. Oh, you're right, it does have Brian Grant. Yeah, okay, I'll fix it on the next one. The The accurate one is definitely over on the CNCF public meeting working doc, and I will put a link into uh, chat for that. As you can right. tell, I haven't been using that one. That's the one, this is the one I've been using. There you go. Cool. Yeah. All right. So it looks like we are doing a quick update on the things that TOC folks need to be looking at. Yep. And then the SIG updates. Okay, Amy, tell us what we're... Hey, fun. Hello, friends. Um, things that are still currently outstanding. Uh, annual reviews. This is the last week that we'll be kind of kicking these out for um, both public comment as well as the three TOC sponsor set up here. Um, as of the 11th, we will be moving towards just a simple vote. Um, that means that it's going to be a lot faster and these will go a lot quicker. So last chance on some of these. Um, also lots and lots of votes out right now. Um, there are links to each one of these votes currently up. We've got Tech Lead Nomination for SIG Observability, Rook for Graduation, Thanos for Incubation, Cortex for Incubation, Cubedge for Incubation, TIKV for Graduation, and K3S for Sandbox. So, lots of stuff out there. I'm sure I'm as guilty as everyone else on the TOC, but hey TOC folks, let's try and get through these. <laughs> Dear friends, there are links here for all of you to be able to make sure and click through directly. So um, that was it as far as my end. We will now happily move on towards the uh, SIGs in here. Well, Bob's around. asking if we can have some additional discussion on k 3 We do I have guess. space at the, uh, uh, the end of the agenda, so. Okay. Okay, I don't think that we're going to run into time issues today, but you know, we, sometimes we're a chatty bunch, who knows? Right. Hello, SIG app delivery. I'm hey, Matrix. folks. Hey, you're oh. here. Come on in. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let me give a quick update on SIG app delivery. So, um, 
we recently just uh, clean up all our backlog in, backlog in our queue. So there's currently no ongoing uh, review effort recently. So um, it's kind of um, good news. And the second thing is we are actively working on an uh, important item, uh, which is regarding to the things of landscape, uh, because uh, a lot of people or feedback that we may want to uh, revisit the current sense of landscape regarding to application management and delivery. So there is a proposal here um, to create a tab, which name is application management and delivery uh, in the sense of landscape. So we can category uh, or uh, application delivery related uh, project into a separate tab. Um, the, the, we're still discussing about that. So there's no concrete plan uh, to uh, or timeline to do that, but there is a rough idea like uh, you know, trying to reach out for uh, collaborators or volunteers uh, to get some more input and also uh, draft a refactoring proposal on this uh, new tab on CNCF landscape. And the last update is the uh, pretension in Clone Native Sami China uh, regarding to uh, the challenges in application delivery. So yeah, this is uh, basically what we have uh, recently. Uh, so the main working item is the, the CNCF landscape part. Just sort of uh, make sure we're using the same terminology. What what do you mean by a tab? A tab this? is a separate tab in CNCF landscape. For example, uh, today's service service has a has a separate tab. Okay. So that is what we, we are talking about. Uh, this is the one of ideas that we also have another idea that we create a, a new category in CNCF landscape. I mean, in the front page. Uh, the issue is, if you look at today's sensitive landscape, it actually including a lot of virus of things like database and the messaging as part of the application uh, definition, the management part. And this is kind of confusing uh, based on feedback from our, our community members because uh, we, we, don't, we don't even know uh, why I need to care about a specific database as a developer. So the idea is that we want to uh, recategorize uh, the current structure. So, and most of the people um, based on our previous community meeting, um, they are tend to create a separate tab. Uh, yeah, but this is still open for discussion because uh, we are trying to collect more input and feedback from the community members. Uh, that is a plan. We want to, we may want to create a survey to get more input from based on, uh, regarding to that. Yeah. I am looking at these, I've, I've got the landscape open myself and I'm thinking it's certainly odd the way that um, database is kind of <laughs> yeah, and a message. <laughs> and then there's a separate storage thing that's part of runtime. I don't know how those, you know, exactly how that rationale is. Yeah. That's why we bring up the idea that we may want to recategory or restructure the current landscape. Right. So do you think that some of the things that are currently under app definition and development, some subset of those would be, the proposal might be to move those into this new application management and delivery tab? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And also, um, and also, there are some part of it. We 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 can't, we can't also have another category which name is CI/CD. So there, in that part, we also mix a lot of things together. So there are also some part of that belonging to the new. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree that database should not be part of application delivery. I, I also agree with that. So, but 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 note that there are some tools uh, in that category. Maybe part of the app delivery. I'm still. We are still looking at it, but the general idea is that the current the current category is really really odd to to most of to most of the community members. I'm also wondering whether we should try and draw a clearer kind of have some consistency between what's on the landscape and what we have in SIGs. So this is really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm also thinking that maybe we want to reorganize the category based on the six, uh, storage, runtime, thing like that. Yeah. So I see some other comments talking about uh, possibly moving databases to storage category. 
Um, yeah. 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 I feel like this is a, a, a possible whole area of conversation about how we could maybe map, somehow try to map the landscape towards the SIGs in some sensible way. Yeah, that is also we are trying to propose. Uh, we really like the category of the sensitive landscape based on the scope of the uh, the six, and it will be much clearer. And uh, I will guess that other six could be involved in this work. I, I will try to actually reach out to the other chairs of the, for example, six direct six runtime. Uh, I, I will see this uh, as a collaboration uh, effort. But we have a lot less six than we have categories here, so there is no easy mapping. Yeah, I mean, one, I think one that's part to... of the that's part of the question here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. One of the ways to do it is to just um, add that as an overlay. You know, you add it as another filter. Mm -hmm. So leave, yeah, leave, you know, leave the categories as is, and then add it as a you know a view that people can see. I wonder if it would be in, it would be an interesting exercise to take the existing landscape and kind of try to figure out how yeah that overlap would work like if you put the sigs on top of that landscape do they look in any way coherent or are they all over the place and uh, yeah maybe it's time for a refresh of the uh, of the way the categories are divided up Ken saying the landscape is based on the architecture from the TOC. Leverage the architecture instead of the landscape. I guess arguably the architecture and the landscape should be consistent. It's clearly some work here anyway. We, we don't necessarily have to make sort of arbitrary <laughs> groupings to, to match the SIG, right, necessarily. Um, sometimes it just makes sense for people to be able to look at the landscape and the area that they think they'll find it. You, you, you know, I mean. Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, Liz, the architecture is definitely, the landscape was based on the architecture, was driven from that. So it definitely is, is consistent. And that's what I'm kind of saying. If we look at the architecture, you keep the technical part of the TOC in there instead of the marketing landscape. Be part right. So, I think we want to be more technically seen in the industry, not marketing for this group. But isn't the and I, I don't think I have a completely formed opinion yet. But isn't the intended audience of a SIG different from the intended audience of looking at that landscape? Whereas the SIGs are as right. broad as possible to catch as much of a topic as diverse as it might be into one uh, into as few as possible six whereas here you're breaking out stuff for potential end users who, who are interested in solving one particular thing at a time instead of having that fire hose of well everything of this roughly matches that other topic hmm. I, i'm not saying it would necessarily be a simple thing to do i'm just wondering whether our language could be more consistent to all these audiences and maybe it, maybe it's too complicated maybe it's yeah bob making a good point that not everything in databases would fit in storage eg in memory databases interesting point yeah i mean yeah. approaching the Approaching this from a different angle, maybe uh, it would be better to talk about labels or tags so people can slice and dice this data as they want. Because for example, with Tenka, I had that thing, is it CI, CD, is it application definition? Uh, application management and delivery also fits it. So now we have three categories, which in theory fit that use case. So maybe it's more about uh, pivoting from this hierarchical structure to labels. So people can can select based on their needs and have something more malleable than a thing which is defined once and then never changed. I I, I like that idea, and I, I mean I, I think a good starting position would be just to tag the SIG responsible for 
you know those individual projects. I mean, there's there's, there's obviously a lot of things in the landscape which aren't which aren't CNCF projects. But if we could just tag those projects that we're responsible for, that that would be an excellent start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is an interesting idea. Uh, although it seems like uh, there will be a lot of effort to re re rearchitecture the current CNCF landscape. Right. Yeah. Just adding tags is, you know, like adding a, a, another view, another filter that people can, yeah. even if it's, um, whether, even if it's not visually uh, represented in the, the diagram, which I'm sure is, well, I know it's quite easy to do based on the, the ability to assign a tag and filter it. But, but even if that was just a um, bulleted list of projects associated to a SIG, and the reason I say that is because when you do, if you were to apply such a filter, you know, such a view that showed projects by SIG, it, well, it might actually be um, enlightening in, in context of the discussion about databases being shifted around. Because what it might show is that uh, some of those associations are quite disparate, you know, that, that some of the projects that are associated to a given SIG are maybe strewn across the landscape or, you know. Yeah, absolutely. All and right, just to, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, ju just to answer that, that one point about the amount of work in my experience and coming from Prometheus, uh, I, I have had this conversation, this, I, 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 I saw the story play out several times. Um, it's, in the end, in my experience, simpler to assign proper labels to something and then allow people to slice and dice the data as they see fit, as opposed to arguing for that one hierarchical structure where everyone has different needs and, and goals and you can never find a true consensus. So it might actually be easier and quicker to, to do labels instead of re-architecting one single static overview. Yeah, I think uh, the labeling idea could well have merit. And I think also just taking a step back and seeing whether we think the categories are quite right. We, and, you know, potentially talking with the end user group about that as well to see what they're finding useful. Uh, yeah, it's a really interesting point. So SIG app delivery, you have opened a giant and interesting can of worms. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that is not, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> right, the goal is one to make through, make sure that everything is not confusing as today. So it will help the community a lot. Uh, although may, maybe you want to take this step by step, uh, you know, small changes by small changes to make this happen. TOC folks, anyone got any objections to this working plan of uh, SIG app delivery at least? starting to look at the app management and delivery side of things. All right. Seems like a good place to start then. <laughs> yeah, so I, I've also tried to uh, reach out to other uh, co-chairs and team lead. Uh, hopefully, uh, for example, six star region and six runtime could be involved and to make sure that this actually go to the right direction based on the current uh, architecture of the six. Uh, sounds good. Uh, and Richard saying important labels, not tags, as in key value pairs, right? Or key value pairs also. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, which SIG is up next? Thank you. Contributors, yeah. speaking of Paris. It was in fact Paris. Come on in. Key value Paris is gonna be my new Twitter handle, I think. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Josh, you're on here too. Do we want to co-present this? Do you wanna do it? How do you wanna take the car here? Go ahead. Argue me. about databases. What, what are we doing? Tell, tell, no, 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 I do not want to argue about <laughs> databases. The um, <laughs> yep. Tell me when I'm speaking. <laughs> All right. Well, let's just let's just tag team this. All right. Um, 
I still left the uh, the link to the letter that we sent to maintainers because we still have only gotten one project out of 60 fill the survey out, which is fine. Um, that either means that people have survey fatigue, which is cool because I've been going to community meetings anyway. Um, but it also just could mean that the survey is too long, whatever, we need to look at it. This is really just a discovery survey. It wasn't necessarily like a CNCF survey. Let's like, uh, let's pull the, let's pull the, the world. It was really just like, let's get us up and running. But now that we're up and running anyway, it's kind of like, it's kind of mute. But uh, if you can, if you're a part of a project, uh, please read that letter. It's just our intro about uh, what we're trying to do here. Uh, and of course, the, like the discovery survey, like do you have a uh, code of conduct, things like that, um, because we're trying to focus on stuff that uh, projects really need. Uh, as far as since, gov uh, since Josh is on the line, I'm going to skip the governance really quick. Uh, but just some of the sub project activity that we've got going on right now. Uh, we've got uh, the maintainer circle and the contributor growth. Uh, as well as the governance groups that are really taking off. Um, I'm actually going to say the last bullet now, which is we've had quite a lot of new contributors join us within the last two to three weeks. Uh, and I would love to thank all of them for powering these sub projects. I see some of them even on the line now, like Dawn Foster, Jennifer, so many other people. Uh, and it's really, really been awesome. Um, as far as the maintainer circle, Karen Chu and I are uh, going to launch a sort of first round birds of a feather uh, early September, thinking post KubeCon EU to give folks give folks a little bit of a breath. Um, thinking meals with maintainers as we go forward. Reason why that we can do uh, we can have sessions in the very early morning, uh, like at PDT lunch, PDT dinner, etc. Uh, so that it's not taking up ample time, but uh, the session ideas that we're already that we're already uh, getting logged in now, people are coming to us saying, "Hey, these are things that we would want to see." Are things like how to build uh, values and principles, uh, how to maintain them, uh, inclusive language and inclusive meetings, etc. So those are the kinds of things that you're going to see from us in September, and go forward there. Uh, the maintainer circle, I did not put on uh, on this slide, but uh, it's hashtag maintainers dash circle on CNCF Slack uh, and in the contributor strategy uh, GitHub repo, we actually have uh, issues that if you want to see something like a, a certain uh, subject or have a, a a wild idea about something that you would like to see from a maintainer circle, feel free to just log an issue there. Uh, and that's where we're keeping everything straight. Um, I'm all, we're also in the middle, like literally when I say in the middle, uh, we just started discussing it last Thursday. So we haven't really even gotten off the ground with like a, a very good meaty issue yet. Um, but we're discussing about making an identity for contributors and or maintainers instead of, um, instead of what we got right now, uh, thinking something like contributors.cncf.io or maintainers.cncf.io. Right now, maintainers.cncf.io resolves into the public TOC spreadsheet, which we could still house on this type of a maintainer site. Uh, but now that we're doing tons of templates and guidance and things like that for both contributors and maintainers and building their projects, it would be super awesome if we could house that somewhere outside of a GitHub repo and have sort of an identity and things like that. So that's something that's TBD that's in discussion. If that's something that, um, if that's something that is sounds of interest to people, uh, you know, plus ones and things like that would be helpful. Uh, and then last, and then I'll let Josh go. Uh, contributor growth uh, is another project that's been steaming along quite nicely. Uh, now that we've got uh, an issue sort of tracking uh, all of the things that we're trying to work on. Uh, and we've created a CNCF slash project uh, template repo where we're gonna put the majority of the templates and the guidance so that you as projects can just fork and go, fork what you need uh, and go. So all of that stuff is underway. Uh, we've got teams of people now working on templates for contributor ladders, as well as contributing markdown files. And the good part here is there's tons of research and things online, um, not even necessarily online, but just tons of research that's actually happening as well that's powering a lot of this. So we're not necessarily recreating wheels here. So 
it's just kind of all coming together. So if you're in a project right now that has uh, either really good documentation for contributors or uh, has some kind of um, like documentation that you feel like uh, not a lot of projects have and that you you think that they should be shown off as sort of a best practice, please get with us because we would like to include that kind of documentation in our stuff. Um, Josh, why don't you kick it with the, the last piece, which is the governance and, yeah. and head us out here. <clears throat> yeah, so the templating effort, of course, is both contributor growth and governance, um, because if you are bringing a new project into the CNCF, you need both, um, <clears throat> you need both the uh, contributor growth information um, and you need um, uh, governance information. Um, plus a lot of documents like things like a contributor ladder is both a governance document and a um, contributor cultivation document. Um, we've, we're also exploring this idea, um, Dim's brought up this idea of a badging concept um, for CNCF projects um, as a quick reference for which of the requirements they fulfilled. Um, we are still fleshing that out. Um, expect to see that in um, as a proposal uh, for next month's uh, uh, SIG TOC meeting. Josh, to, to clarify, the these are these are upcoming proposals for requirements on projects. Um, well, actually, the badging concept was going to start out centering around uh, two things, existing requirements, um, and second, um, things that are in the annual review. Um, so the idea is just initially, because we actually publish a lot of information on projects, but it's not very penetrable for the casual user or casual contributor. Um, so... Um, I, we had the idea that a system of badges would make it a lot easier for somebody who's coming to the CNCF, who's looking for a project in a particular area to evaluate which ones they want to participate in. Um, the, sure. um, yeah. Make, make sense, make sense. Mm -hmm. So we, eventually we probably would, oh. um, well, I mean, obviously maturity levels would be one of the badges. Um, then, um, um, then for example, whether or not a project was multi-organizational, um, which is one of the requirements, um, the, um, uh, whether or not, um, they have, um, some of the others, uh, whether or not, They have um, contributor onboarding um, in some concrete form. Um, there were a couple of others. Eventually, this is going to lead to proposing some additional things for annual review or due diligence, um, as you know, we come across things that are really going to be really important to users or potential contributors. But we really want to start with the things that already exist. Lee's just posted the link to the CII. Yes. Yeah, and, and that's where we got the idea. Do you think we should be just using some of these? See, I, I'm not reading the in detail, but I'm I, wondering if it makes sense for us to just wholesale use the same criteria or something different. Well, I was under the impression the CII badges were all security related. Right, or they're, they're harder in nature, if I can use that term. Um, yeah. Whereas, like, you know, hey, do you have a procedure wherein people can report vulnerabilities or do you have licenses assigned to all your things? Or just sort of like, it's basically, there are a lot of security-centric things, but also just general hygiene for products or projects themselves. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, the softer side of, of contributor strategy, you know, to, to Liz's point, maybe maybe that could be, those could be overlaid on the same, you know, program or, you know, but. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, if we, you know, I mean, for that matter, I wouldn't mind surfacing the CIA badges as well. Um, 
because that's that's a good system, but it doesn't necessarily cover everything that people want to know. Um, I mean, I mean to give you an example, right? If you are a potential contributor, you really care about whether or not the project has um, some form of contributor onboarding um, uh, that's maintained. Um, uh, and that's not something that's part of the CI badge system. Um, the, um, um, you know, and for that matter, you know, if you are a potential corporate contributor, you're going to care whether or not a project is already multi-organizational um, the um, because, you know, and here we're talking about sandbox and incubating projects, right? Because graduated projects have to be multi-organizational. The, um, so um, because approaching a project that is still backed by a single sponsoring company is different from approaching a project that already has multiple companies sponsoring it. However, like I said, we're not quite done with the proposal yet. We want to go back over the annual review criteria and the due diligence criteria and come up with a, a sort of concrete initial list of badges. There's also the issue that because we're going to a thumbs up, thumbs down system for um, evaluating the annual reviews, it's um, We'll then need some additional auditing, probably by SIG contributor strategy, of the content of the annual reviews, because um, project leaders themselves tend to be very optimistic um, about self-evaluation. Um, so, yeah. Although we haven't changed the criteria for sandbox annual review, it's still. I guess actually that is something worth pausing on. We're moving it to a vote so that it's consistent with the application process. Um, mm -hmm. We had a, a, a brief discussion earlier in the week on, on Slack about uh, whether or not we need to, well, basically the format of that annual review document. For me, that annual review for Sandbox is a forcing function for both the project and the TOC to just take the pulse of the project. You know, so filling in that document is is a useful kind of exercise. Um, yeah, yeah, it's more you know somebody eventually needs to check these things because I mean, take for example contributor onboarding, right? A project that has a good first issue list, right? Has contributor onboarding, but only if it's maintained. So eventually, you know, and they're going to tend to fill out their first annual review saying, hey, we've got that. And then the project themselves is not necessarily going to fill out their second annual review and say, oh, we don't have that anymore. So at some point, someone else needs to take a look at it and say, hey, I just glanced at this and none of those good first issues have been updated in a year and a half. Um, so you don't really have new contributor onboarding, you know, unless you put it somewhere else. Um, the, um, so, um, you know, so there needs to be some level, and that's actually one of the reasons why we haven't made a proposal yet, is we need to figure out, you know, what the sort of level of, of review um, is going to be, because if we have a badge system, but those badges are not accurate, then they don't help anybody. True. Okay. There is a note from Paris in chat about how both the governance and contributor growth working groups meet at later times today if anyone is interested. I think that's it for us. Okay. I'm Network. muted. Saying thank you and hello, Sick Network. Hello. Uh, Boy, sorry. You get uh, you get a conversation going in Slack, and then uh, Sig Network updates. So, uh, with respect to projects, uh, there are a couple that have been in queue to do a review on. Um, one is Meshery, 
Another one is the service mesh performance specification. Um, the, there is uh, the network, serv network service mesh has an annual review that's been uh, posted and is uh, ready for review. And I'll admit that that I'm that from, from my own part, speaking only for myself, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if uh, that's I'm not sure how to advance that or if that's a with some of the changes of responsibilities is that a kind of a SIG responsibility or not. So uh, So I'll seek clarification. Um, projects uh, that are actively under review is Ambassador uh, as proposed for incubation. So due diligence is ongoing there. Uh, Chaos Mesh was proposed for Sandbox and uh, came in at a time in which uh, the, or well, uh, yeah, it came in at a time in which we, we were, you know, changing up the, how to do a proposal. And so they, they just kind of resubmitted under the new form. And I think they were evaluated this last go round. They're here. They're with us. Oh. oh, very good. Yes. All is well. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so I think, you know, I think that they're still in process. They're still, um, uh, I, I think they'd gotten some feedback on this last go around, this last set of evaluations about sandbox projects. So, so feel, any, uh, feel free to correct me on any of the stuff I just said, if that's, you know, I'm used to it. Uh, <laughs> next was an update on uh, the service mesh working group that um, that well is uh, is formed and um, based on a lot of folks being busy um, hasn't established a regular cadence of meeting just yet, but has uh, really kind of these three initiatives that are. Uh, some of which are further along than others, some of which have been defined and have been in progress for a while. Um, some of which are um, just have their first level definition, and we're trying to make sure that we're we've solicited all the interest or in interest from all parties that would want to participate. But to be frank, we need to just start um, uh, hosting some a regular cadence of meetings for that that working group. I figured that we would give uh, an update on two of the three initiatives that are to be stewarded within there. And so that's the next couple of slides. Um, one of them is uh, the notion that uh, one of the projects within uh, SIG Network is SMI. Um, there has been an outstanding need for a set of conformance tests and, and tooling to verify whether or not a mesh is, uh, you know, implements SMI specs um, as they intend to, or in some cases, as they don't intend to. Um, not all meshes intend to fulfill each of those specs. And so, um, and so there's been uh, progress made on what's really been kind of a longstanding need for some time. Um, the, to, to sum it up um, briefly, I'll say that, that in order to verify conformance, many of you that I'm speaking to are familiar with Everyone's familiar in concept with, the, with conformance, but to facilitate it, like in context of a service mesh uh, and in context of many service meshes in order to provide um, uh, a utility that will provision any number of service meshes, provision you know, any of those that are participating in SMI, provision a sample workload on top of them, um, define uh, tests that need to be, you know, things that need to be asserted and then validated. There's a bit of uh, tooling that need to be, needs to be created for that. Um, it, it's kind of a lot. And then finally, it needs to generate a report um, against whether or not you know, those tests are passing or failing. So that, that's what this initiative is, is about. Providing an appropriate pause. Now we'll, we'll go to the um, next slide on um, another one that we've spoken about, uh, I think on this call um, a couple of times, um, and that is uh, also beginning to take shape and has um, undergone some initial revisions, something that had an organic start um, at Google and uh, 
I'm not even sure how how old the genesis of this uh, set of, of this body of work is, but um, in preparation for KubeCon EU, this, the, the teams that are involved have been working to uh, better describe the, the effort and the spec that's, that's um, being formed, uh, which is about, um, well, yeah, which is about capturing and describing um, the performance of a service mesh. There's something that the thing that this spec directly does today is to capture the details of the environmental details, the mesh details, the configure the mesh, the configure the workload, the performance of it. We kind of, I think, I think I'd presented that previously. With this spec, uh, those that are adopting, um, uh, of which a number of the service meshes have been pretty keen to and to implement. Um, the spec intends to facilitate other things from there. Uh, some of those that are participating currently are suggestive of building in some patterns, uh, best practice patterns for how people are deploying a mesh and then using those um, or the spec itself facilitating for those common patterns to be tested against. And so, um, bo so both of these projects, um, young, um, but good to air out some of these initiatives that are being worked through in the working group. I guess there's a call for an inherent call for participation for those that are interested, um, which is mostly what um, the, the people that have been involved have been spending their time doing. But. So that's SIG Network. I had to trick a few out of this slide, but no, this is good. Ken, uh, I see that you're unmuted. Anything from your side? Nope, this is perfect. Cool. Any other comments on that? All right. Sig observability. Yes. Um, the votes thing um, was already mentioned by Amy. Thank you very much for this. Um, so FYI for the for the tech lead, uh, so ever since we started, we have basically already been behaving as if Bartek was a tech lead because we needed one and he volunteered, but we would still uh, love to have this formalized. Um, same for like uh, Thanos, uh, to my count, already passed the 7.3 uh, required mark by having eight binding votes, which is why I didn't list it here. For Cortex, I think we still have a few outstanding ones and we can also use this talk uh, or this time slot to, to talk about either of those votes if there's any uh, questions or such by TUC. Um, the rest for the third chair, we are still looking. Um, we had some initial conversations, but those cooled down. And for or just due to all the holidays, uh, we basically decided to pause uh, the meetings and not have those two meetings in August. And that's already it from my side, except someone wants to discuss uh, either of the votes then I'm more than happy to. I think you do now have a couple of votes, a couple of binding votes coming in on that tech lead nomination at least. That would be very much appreciated. <laughs> yes, indeed, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Oh yeah, you're right. Sig runtime. Yeah, hi. It's Ricardo here. So, yeah, project updates for Sig runtime. So, QBedge is applying for incubation. Due diligence is complete. Uh, thank you, Alina, for driving the due diligence in the TOC. So the vote has been called for. So the uh, it's out there in the CNC, the TOC mailing list. So please go ahead and vote. Uh, so for those of you who don't know QBatch, it's a project that allows you to run uh, edge type of workloads on top of Kubernetes. 
and it has a central component that runs on on a Kubernetes cluster in a centralized location, and then it has an edge component that allows you to run the workloads at the edge uh, on the Kubernetes nodes. So that's Cube Edge. Another project that is in the due diligence stage and they're applying for incubation is Quay. Uh, so there have been a few comments in the due diligence documents of publicly available. And I think uh, the maintainers reply to some of the comments. I think Liz, you actually uh, uh, put in some comments. So, if anybody from the project or maintainers uh, are on the call, uh, please follow up with the comments and you know see where you want to take the the project forward and if you want to continue with the incubation path. And I think another project uh, that falls within the runtime scope is uh, K3S, and so there's going to be some discussion at the end of the call. As far as uh, our working group, uh, container orchestrated working group, uh, so there's a specification that they're working on, the CDI container device interface. So right now they're just talking to the different runtime projects and groups, uh, container D and cryo and some other runtimes. Uh, so they're trying to get uh, everybody together and making the idea popular so everybody's on board. Uh, so they're planning to have a POC pretty soon and have a, a spec in, in written in Golang. So that's for CDI. And as far as presentations and community outreach. outreach. So at our last meeting, uh, we had a presentation from the Node Resource Interface. Uh, this is uh, from Michael and Crosby at Apple. So uh, this is a new way to interface with the nodes. Uh, so try to make it in, in a common way, following the CNI footsteps like container networking interface. So hopefully this will becomes a, uh, a new spec and is followed by, by the different teams. And they're also talking to SIGNode and the Kubernetes community. So, so they're on board with the idea. And for new projects, uh, a schedule for presentations, we have Tinkerbell uh, in our next meeting. And that's basically bare metal provisioning of uh, notes. And then, so that, that will be um, uh, very similar to what we have with Metal Q, right? So we'll see uh, what they say in, uh, in our next meeting. So other projects that we're, we're reaching out to, uh, there's a project called Seldom Core that's uh, basically allowing you to run AI type of workloads on top of Kubernetes. Uh, so we're trying to look for some of those gaps that are missing in SIG runtime. So AI ops is one of the projects, projects that we don't have. And so that, so we hopefully we'll get a presentation uh, in one of our next meetings. So they said they're interested in presenting. And last but not least, we had an intro session at the Virtual Cloud Native Summit in China. Uh, and we're also planning to have an uh, uh, intro and a uh, deep dive session in KubeCon North America. So we're planning to, to submit that session. Yeah, and that's all for the updates for SIG Runtime. So uh, any questions? There's a question on the chat that says how cube edge K3S. So I mentioned in the beginning cube edge uh, runs on top of Kubernetes. K3S is a Kubernetes distribution. So those, those are two different things. So cube edge has a component that runs on top of uh, a centralized Kubernetes cluster that has nodes at the edge. And there's this edge component that runs at, uh, on the edge nodes. Uh, so, and it, they talk to the centralized component in a central Kubernetes cluster. So that's that's what Kubeedge is, and K3S is more of a Kubernetes distribution for 
people trying to run workloads at, uh, at the edge, but then installing the, the whole Kubernetes cluster at the edge location. And I think that's the difference, right? So uh, hopefully that explains, you know, the differences. Any other questions? I, I would still debate the characterization of K3S as a distro, but I think that is actually the topic I wanted to get to here before we run out of time. Yeah, so yeah, that will be talked about at the end, so. But thanks for the clarification. Yep. Okay, let's try to quickly whiz through security and storage so we can get to that K3S discussion. I'm actually playing the role of the six security folks today um, as, as the tech leads are tech leads and chairs are not available here, but they wanted to be able to highlight this for all of you um, being able to show off like membership from 63 members from 45 different affiliations, which makes it one of our bigger SIGs. Um, previous highlights include a checkoff presentation and working around the security reference uh, reference architecture for cloud native applications. And again, another landscape conversation, but that's coming up soon. Um, cloud Custodian has completed a re-kickoff, so they're in assessment, um, and they are currently looking for volunteers. That will be a highlight of the Wednesday meeting at 10 a.m. Pacific, and Keycloak is currently near completion. Um, and they have a Cloud Native Security Day, a virtual event on August 17th. So CN Security Day is the hashtag for that. And that's security. Very well represented, Amy. Storage. Um, okay, so we can be pretty quick. Um, the, the the one thing um, I'd like uh, some help with is um, uh, if a TOC member um, could uh, could raise their hands to to work with us on the due diligence for for Profiga going in at at incubation. Um, as uh, I've, I've sent an email around anyway, so so hopefully we can we can find somebody there. Um, the TIKV and Rook are waiting for their graduation votes, um, and we had a couple of other really interesting presentations. There's a there's a Prius project um, which is from Dow Cloud and uh, Linstor, uh, which which are considering a sandbox submission, and we had a presentation from IBM for a, a data lifecycle framework, which is an, a, <clears throat> an interesting way of making data sets declarative. Uh, and it's used in in some research situations, but I think it it its scope can be can be expanded. Um, with, as you might be aware, we've also been working on a performance and benchmarking white paper. Um, it's kind of recently stalled, but in the sort of um, in an attempt for perfect not to be the enemy of good, um, we're going to uh, we're going to take the the content that we do have, which which actually is pretty decent already um, and and uh, and try and target a v1 based on what we've got uh, and look to iterate rather than uh, delay it any further um, and also we we did recordings and live q a for the for the virtual summit in china and the recording for the kubecon in in europe as prep that's me great so that's all the SIGs, I think, isn't it? Is indeed. Uh, great. So thanks, everyone. Bob, do you want to talk about K3S or ask a question about K3S? Um, yes, please. Um, hang on a second. I'm trying to get my video to start. There we go. Hey, thanks for letting me um, say some words here. Uh, I felt especially after the email the email threads that were going on that deserved a little bit more discussion. Um, I, I, I think uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put this by way of a request to the TOC for a couple of things. One is um, to maybe more carefully to define what a distro is versus a fork. And I, I'm not sure that this is a, um, a Kubernetes specific request. I think this is just the first place we're hitting, we're hitting this. Um, uh, and I, I know, for example, the um, uh, Thanos Cortex Prometheus topic was raised. Uh, I, I see that, uh, and I might be wrong on this, just personal opinion, 
it, it appears that some of the motivation for um, Cortex and Thanos to come into the CNCF as sandbox projects is actually to merge the projects in the long run with Prometheus, which seems like a great direction. Um, it seems like the uh, K3S is actually, K3S approval in the sandbox is not motivated by that, but is, I think, uh, uh, I would say creating conditions for more forks. Um, I, I feel pretty uh, like pretty convicted that um, if you look at what's going on inside K3S, not, not at the number of lines of code, but um, actually how it's constructed, that it is, it is a fork. Um, but I really think that the TOC and like uh, there, there are motivations, there are, let's say, marketing motivations to not call it that. Uh, we're with, if, if K3S comes into Sandbox, which it appears it will, um, there are, uh, I think it's going to open the floodgates to a wide number of projects, similar projects that are going to want to come in. Uh, so anyway, I, um, I, I guess I'm just trying to raise the alarm here that the, um, K3S coming into Sandbox has a significant long range impact on the CNCF, on the Kubernetes project. And uh, I think we need to look ahead on the implications as a result. I think I, I would, I do look at it through a different lens. And the lens is that K3S is an experiment in running Kubernetes, you know, on, on four edge devices, on smaller, you know, having a smaller footprint K3S. And that experiment, you know, took off, I think, way beyond sort of the original expectation. I think it was originally just like, I'm just going to try doing this thing. It's gotten a lot of attention. And the sandbox is a place for cloud native experiments. So, you know, we've had a conversation with the Kubernetes project. It didn't feel like that was going to be a successful place to try and force it in. There's a parallel universe where maybe that experiment could have happened within the Kubernetes project. I don't think we're in that universe. So, um, you know, do we, do we want to encourage the experimentation of using Kubernetes on small devices? I think we do. I, I, you know, I, would, I think um, it's um, gone exactly this way. I'm not so sure, but I, I think that your, um, your perspective there leads directly back to the long running discussions about what's the purpose of Sandbox. And I, I think to the degree that um, the purpose of Sandbox is to do exactly what you're saying, then um, I have no disagreement. But if the purpose of the Sandbox is to also get projects to incubation um, where they do have kind of a, a life of their own, then I think it's a different question. And I, I'm not actually at all concerned or object to the um, perspective you have there about K3S as a sandbox project. My deep, deep concern is K3S on a track to incubation as a fork. Um, and I think it would actually be helpful for the TOC to take a clear stance on the fact that um, K3S is a fork. Um, and I think there's technical merit that can be made to explain why that's the case, as opposed to a distro, an opinionated configuration. Um, and I think even combining the two would be worthwhile. In other words, acknowledge that it is a fork. And the reason why it's in sandbox is to provide this area for innovation. But I think the current, I think the current confusion is, um, is that if it's on the track to incubation as a fork, or even as a distro, the pattern that that sets um, in the community uh, on a wider basis has very high impact. Yeah, I think that's fair. And I, I definitely don't think that a floodgates worth of forked projects are going to get necessarily <laughs> welcomed by the TOC. Um, so yeah, that's certainly not our intention to uh, encourage lots of forks. Um, maybe there's something we can do there around language either specific to the K3S situation or uh, yeah I mean just in making the point the sandbox doesn't have to be a route to incubation um, 
yeah, maybe we need to clarify that. I, I would I would request the clarification, um, and um, I want to also highlight Gadi's uh, um, point from the email thread today, and he's in chat here as well, which is that um, <clears throat> the K3S project is not part of the Kubernetes um, PSC. So that means that, that the CVE management, um, and there's a lot of it that's going on in the Kubernetes project proper, is not actually extended to K3S except as an afterthought. Um, and as a downstream yeah, and I, project, I think that's there, completely fair and would be there are some significant issues there. Yeah, I think that would be a significant problem for moving into like incubation or graduation stage, but I don't think it has to be a block or a sandbox. Okay. But, I've yeah. said my piece. Thank you for listening and hearing it out. It, it's fair. It is fair. And we do need to make sure we're not um, sending the wrong signals. Yeah. All right. We are one minute over, so uh, I think unless anyone has anything pressing, thank you very much, everyone. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Al. Good to see you.